Welcome in. Let's make it happen. Sports Grid's Bracket Central live right here on a Friday night. Great stuff from both Scott Farrell and Mike Carver. I'm Kevin Walsh with Donnie Wrightside over the next four hours covering the NCAA tournament. Day two, round one, a lot in the books. Still plenty to come and two on the board right now, Donnie. Fantastic stuff. And by the way, you know, just wrapping up there, watching the previous boys out there tuning us up. They left us with a 43-43 game right now between Yale and Auburn and also Colorado and Florida, 54-52. to So we're getting some heat right out of the gate, but i got to tell you guys, 7 o'clock hour coming up here at Nebraska-Texas A&M's got some juice for me, and I can't wait to get going. So big night right here. I can't wait. Yeah, we will preview these games as they mm-hmm. come along. We'll talk yeah. a little bit about where yep. some of that action uh, looks like it seems worthwhile. But as far as the games on the board right now, I'm invested futures-wise. Mm-hmm. With both of these games here, DRS, uh, Auburn is a preseason national title yes. ticket that I'm holding. And I also played some Florida Sweet 16 uh, once the bracket came out, both in battles. And look, I've seen Yale play top teams in hang, right? They did it. I think they had a halftime lead over Kansas earlier this season on the road. I'm not too concerned with what I'm seeing, but obviously at some point, I'd love to see the Tigers pull away. And also, if you're looking at that game overall, Yale the 13 seed, we call that the bracket of death there in the East. So if you're looking at UConn, maybe a standing ovation right now for Yale. Hey, man, maybe take Auburn out so it might be not as be, excuse me, that path might not be just as hard. But I'm looking also at that Colorado-Florida game. In my brackets, thought it was going to be a close game. I chose Colorado in that one. It looks like we got a high-scoring tilt here. No surprise there. 176.5 is the live total. Uh, in that basketball game, our radio audience working its way in here across the network, live everywhere, including Sirius XM, Channel 159, Bracket Central, Sports Grid's coverage of the NCAA tournament. Kevin Walsh and Donnie Wright side here. Uh, you know, Auburn, you, you mentioned that yeah. big four. Yep. UConn today in action gets the cover dominant. Yep. Look, I get it, it's Stetson, but uh, that game was 52-19, I believe, at the break. Hammering. I had one of my favorite bets of the tournament today, Donnie. You're going to laugh at me, but you. But as someone who is willing to lay juice, maybe you won't. Minus 300, okay. race to five, UConn against Stetson. You took that? Yeah. Wow. And, and obviously it won. And I'll tell you this, spoiler, I'm looking to do it again a little Whoa, bit later on right. with one of these big-time favorites here. Quick out to you. Yeah, that would make me nervous, though, because obviously I don't think Stetson was going to compete <laughs> anyway with UConn. But aren't you just a little bit nervous? Like, three ball goes down to yes. Stetson early. Like, oh, no, this can't be happening. But obviously – that wasn't the case here as UConn is dominant. And you expect those dominant teams to get up early. But if it was like a race to like 15 or 20, what would it be, like minus 3,000? Right. Because you know they would pull away. So you get a little bit of a cheaper price, obviously, early in that game. But I don't know. I don't, I don't have the nerves for that. I could never do the five. No, I'm going I'm I'm, I'm, I'm to get you. But here's, here's the – I will say this. Yeah. That is why it, it is the price that it is. And I yeah. actually, you know, look, you, you do the amount of research you can for mm-hmm. a bet that's going to be decided in with, you know, two to three minutes yeah. of basketball. But – UConn has played those bottom-level teams, and in the first 10 games, they had won the first 5-9 out of 10. Shout-out to Manhattan Jaspers, yep. Donnie. Yeah. That hit five before them. Uh, I'm probably going to do this a bit later with Purdue uh, in their game against Grambling. By the way, let me just bring this game up, too. Western Kentucky, for me, I'm like, you know what? That 14-and-a-half looks really sweet. Let me grab that. Took a little bit of a piece, drove up. Wait, what a perfect handicap. Yeah. 43 36 at the break. I'm getting 14 and a half. Heck, even Marquette might get run in their first game from Western Kentucky. We know about the pace and the tempo, and who knows if Kolek's going to be great. He ends up with 18 11 and 6, a 51 to 26 second half, where they covered over Western Kentucky. That is rough, man. If you're taking close to 15 up at the break and get smoked in the second half, goodness. Yeah, it was unfortunate there. Man. Played it as well. It was a situation of, you know, Western Kentucky, again, it, it was really standout for mm-hmm. me, Donnie. They are the fastest team in college basketball with a near top 100 defense. And here are the teams that play about as fast as them Mm -hmm. with better defenses. Bama, Arizona, and New Mexico. Those are all teams that people legitimately respect. So for Western Kentucky, I thought they could give Marquette an issue. They did. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things at halftime. You're sat- I put Western Kentucky through in the bracket. Mm-hmm. I didn't grab any money line. What, what am I doing? And then all of a sudden, I ended up not being able to now, did take, you take a, a plus take them in that bracket down. there because you figured Colec and maybe it's just a tough matchup here at game number one in the so tournament. The Colec thing only helps, Don. Yeah. Right? But again, tr- like Western Kentucky check the boxes mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. I-, I loved what I saw from this basketball team yeah. and felt they were dangerous. The Colec thing could only be – Beneficial there. But the thing is, co- the Kolek situation didn't have anything to do with it. He was incredible right away. Yeah. He hit the first six points of the, ba- of the basketball game, or six of the first eight with two made threes. 
uh, for Marquette there. And that's going to make Marquette, you know, feel dangerous, obviously, because they're going to be favored over whoever wins this Florida-Colorado game. Mm -hmm. And if they get past that, they're going to be playing the winner of NC State-Oakland, yep. a double-digit seed. So, and, and that's the real big thing now for this Florida-Colorado game is you play Marquette and you'll be favored in that, you know, Sweet 16 matchup there, which is going to be very, very enticing. Let's talk a little bit more about Colorado and Florida, Donnie. Mm -hmm. It is an early three-point lead. This game is going back and forth. We had a lot of fun yesterday really getting involved with the live markets, and that's going to continue here yes. tonight. Uh, this is the type of game that you and I live for, uh, points of plenty. Yeah, it looks like we're – let me just – because I didn't check to see the three-point shooting statistics, which I'm clicking on right now because I pretty, assume they're probably pretty good. Colorado Buffalo is 5 of 8. Not a lot of volume here so far, but 63%. You flip it down to Florida, 6 of 15, 40%. So they're humming here on offense. 50% from the floor for the Florida Gators, 57% for the Colorado Buffaloes. And every time I look at the score, it seems to change. It's Florida with a couple-point lead. It's Colorado with a few points lead. Now we take a look, 63-58 Colorado Buffaloes here. I thought they were the better team in this one because – because Florida lost the big man. Now, not to say that he was an enforcer where he was scoring a lot of points, but anytime you use a guy that plays major minutes over seven feet, you know you have to adjust some of the things that you like to do, which I thought the tempo would be even better without him on the court, and it looks like it is. 63-58, 13 minutes to go. Many games here, it's 63-58 with two minutes to go. We'll see where this one winds up. The entire starting lineup for Colorado in double digits right now, there's yeah. nobody in this game that has more than 13 points. This is just a balanced game. Yeah, it's pretty good. Which means it should probably keep going, right? If everybody's got a hot hand, then you don't have to worry about yeah. one guy going cold. Uh, Donnie mentioned the upcoming games that we're going to be able to dive into. A&M mm -hmm. Nebraska, Duke uh, Vermont. I have a race to bet in that Nebraska A&M uh, wow. game, which we will be able to talk about. As far as the early results, and Donnie will get the chance – uh, to expand, but did yeah. anything from that early window really grab your eye? No, not much here. Uh, I did have Florida Atlantic in my pool, but wasn't surprised that Northwestern won that game. And if you watch the finish of it there, missed free throw by Florida Atlantic turned into a bucket the other way and mm -hmm. then a mysterious, hey, you got six seconds left to go. Let's slow play this and get a 35-foot three-point shot that ended up being blocked. So you knew the momentum was going to Northwestern right down that shoot. But I thought Marquette was going to be talented today. They were in a little bit of trouble. The one that is interesting is I know you were talking about New Mexico you know, get on the bandwagon. Let's get to maybe the Sweet 16. That's what I was hearing this week. No dice for them. 77 for Clemson here. Yeah, Do you like them this week? New Mexico? Yeah. No, not really. It was one like New Mexico then. Somebody on the network was pumping New Mexico. Ben, I it might have been. Was it? Ben put oh, him in his on. final four. Whoa. Ben put him in his final four. Wow. I think it's. I think there's been a lot of instances, and I'm not with Ben, but just I think people like teams and the bracket came out and then nothing changed. New, there's no New Mexico hasn't seen an offense like Clemson. So. It, it, that's they, they just really have Hammer it. Too. Oh, 100% DRS, 100%. Now again, I'm not telling you that I thought it was going to be a 20 point roll, yeah. right? That, that's not the point there. Yeah. And you'll you know, you'll see in my bracket I, I push New Mexico forward. That's more playing the brackets than, than, than anything else. Yep. It was an impressive run there. We're hitting a break. We're coming back. It's bracket central with Kevin Walsh and Donnie right side on sports. Break. Sportsgrid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have you yes! That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sportsgrid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like this, it is. Is, this is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third, they get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. They're always going to be better than the West half. Yep. It, 
that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West staff, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. In the NC State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me that they not only went on a five-day heater like they did in 83 when Galvano took them another six games and they won the national mm-hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, Ukraine, right. like, they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All we've heard you say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka high. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. We're live on Sports Grid with Bracket Central. We're live with a pair of games in the NCAA tournament. Uh, with Auburn and Yale, as well as Colorado and Florida. Uh, Tiger starting to pull away a bit here, DRS, 53-46. Mm-hmm. to 46. What did you make of Auburn heading into this tournament? I loved them coming into the tournament, to be honest. And in that bracket, I thought they were the number two overall seed, even though they got the four seed here. Now, I'm not saying they didn't deserve the four seed, because it is based on the conference that you play in during the regular season, and if you can make a run in that conference tournament. But just talent level, yeah. I thought they were the second best overall. So, if you're looking at Auburn as maybe a legitimate chance to take down the top seed in that region, they better start winning games like Yale. And also, Kevin... Sometimes we get caught up a lot in this. You see that – I don't even want to say it's struggled. Yale's a decent basketball team. There's no doubt about it. But most yeah. people thought Auburn should be able to just put them away. Sometimes we look at these games and say to ourselves, ah, maybe Auburn's just not that good, Kevin, here in round number one. We've seen this play out before. Roll in round number one, lose in round number two, struggle in round number one, roll in round number two. I don't take too much out of this game unless we see a final minute of play. It's two or three points or maybe a possession here, but it looks like you're right. 55-48 now as Yale just dropped a uh, bucket here, so we'll see how it gets a little bit closer. But I'm not putting the panic button on Auburn here. Well, no, I think reality is you got to be careful with the panic button hit at any point. Mm-hmm. With the way this tournament is structured, you are, if you're going to win a championship, more often than not have to win a crazy game. Yeah. And, you know, I know UConn last year, which is in everybody's mind, they covered every game, which, you know, probably. Struggle with Wyoming in the first half. Well, yeah, they didn't cut. Uh, let's leave it alone. Big gas Nobody station. cares. Big Nobody gas cares. Station. That's right. Uh, so now go gas. But <laughs> it was one of those things, Donnie, where while, you know, UConn made it look easy, it's not easy. You know, go back to that year prior, that deep run that North Carolina made. Yeah. You know, they had to win an overtime game against Baylor, a crazy game yep. at that. So y- you are going to be in battles. So th- this is just one of those situations where, again, I think Auburn is – we talk about the bracket. I, Yale is capable of beating uh, teams better than them. Mm-hmm. Not Auburn, in my opinion, who has zero losses mm-hmm. out of that first quadrant. I think that was just – a level of step up that I wouldn't be anticipating. Can I just zone in on something that we saw earlier today, and, th- sure. and then we can kind of get to some of the upcoming stuff? But San Diego State, Mountain West, no cover against UAB. Up early, trailed a little bit late, were able to get the win, mm-hmm. but still no cover. New Mexico absolutely embarrassed by Clemson in that basketball game. Correct. Nevada, an all time collapse. Colorado State followed up the Virginia game, which is what they used to get into this tournament mm-hmm. officially, with a worse offensive performance somehow. Boise did not make it out of the round uh, or the, the, the first four format there. They put six teams in this tournament. Mm-hmm. If you're the committee, if you're a fan of college basketball, yeah. can you take what happened this year 
and use that against this conference next year? No, can't do it. You can't do it. It's a year-to-year basis, and they try to make the best, you know, astute picks as they can each and every year, and I understand that. I would like to hold it against them because it's clear to us now that they put those six teams in. And also, let's talk about what they did on Selection Sunday with those six teams. Yes, they put six teams in, but that's a lot of respect for the Mountain West. But did you see where they seeded them across the board? Very low. Yeah. The top two teams there, what, sitting, you know, what was the top, what's the top seed here? Would it well, be San Diego State, State got the five, five but outside exactly. of that. Outside of that, it was absolutely nothing. So they're telling us on one hand, boy, that conference is really deep and really tough. And then they're telling us, well, they're not really that good, but we'll put the teams in at this point here. I don't think you can do it. It's a case-by-case, year-by-year thing. But if we're always leaning, right, wouldn't you lean towards the upper majors here as opposed to, and again, it's not a mid-major, but they're a lower major for me, technically the Mountain West. I just would put more teams in, which is why we take a look at the Big East. Should have had more teams in, and it should have been at the expense of the Mountain West. I think what's difficult, though, Donnie, is and this is these are kind of this is where we're maybe talking it out mm-hmm. more so than kind of being definitive. This must be this yep. is, you know how these metrics are are built right and their efficiency metrics and we we trust what they tell us, but it is odd when so much of it does come from playing one another. It's why I have my hesitations that the Big Twelve is the greatest conference we've ever seen, like we've talked about. And we'll see, you know, ultimately how it goes. Mm-hmm. But that, what do we do? Do we do more in the non-con? You know what I mean? Is 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 that really going to be worth it? How many people? You know, are they going to subscribe to that? Because the thing is, on the as you know, there's certain things people complain about, like FAU who lost earlier today. Donnie, realistically, the the resume was not great. A lot of losses out, you know, in quad three, quad four, whatever it might be. All of those Mountain West teams looked worthy and looked like they should have been given a higher seed. So it's such a challenging situation. But for a lot of gamblers, it was a gift. Six Mountain West teams to fade. And they're making a lot of money now. No, you're right. And also, like, for most of us, or I should say for us, we're East Coast. We don't get to see a lot of Mountain West basketball unless you're burning the midnight oil. For me, if I'm in bed by 8.30, how much Midwest bas- or Mountain West basketball am I watching? Barely any. You're trusting the numbers. You're trusting what comes in. Now, also, I do love a competitive conference because one of the things that it seems like the Mountain West got boosted was, Kevin, oh, look, competitive conference. Let's put six in. And then we look at the Big East, which was really deep from top until about DePaul, let's say. They go, uh, no, we're not, we don't yeah. care about parity in the Big East here. We're just going to put the top three teams in, which I thought was wrong. Could have got a couple more seeds in there. But, no, from a year-to-year basis, it's individualized. But I know next year when the Mountain West claims, like, did you see our regular season, a lot of people like you will be like, yeah, I saw it, and I don't care about it. Put three teams in. Let's be done with it. Look, at, and on the same topic, because while we're just talking about what we saw today, yeah. I mean, FAU got into this tournament with the seed line that they were given. And, I mean, you have to say it was based on what we saw from last year. Correct. Even your best bracketologists who had them put in this field. Because there were some people on the extreme end who said they didn't belong in, and I thought there was valid points made by that. But your bracketologists who were just looking for accuracy, who were putting them in, were putting them in Dayton in first four games. We're putting them on the 10 line, and eight seeds stunned people. And you look at that American conference that lost the Houston Cougars. Memphis completely collapsed. UAB is the only team that allowed the Mountain West to put a win up on the board. Yep. And FAU looked atrocious. I understand the game went to OT, but they played awful in that basketball game. Janelle Davis didn't bring it. They looked disconnected all year long. I'm sure Dusty May, if he can, will get out of there this offseason and get a better job again, if he can, because he opted not to do that last year. And again, we're just it is one of those things, and we're only going to do this after the round of 64 because we don't do this when a team is eliminated after putting a win up on the board but we think about the teams that aren't there we think about teams that we weren't sure if they belonged and then what's so fascinating about an FAU is while that's the case are we, how, do they belong they continue to be bet closes a four and a half point favorite in this basketball game Donnie yeah. and lose outright I gotta tell you too you try to equate it from a year to year basis where do we rip here in New Jersey and it's not really fair because you can't fault players for doing this would have loved St. Peter's to run it back right all those players there, they make a deep run in. Everybody's excited about them. But what do they do? Parlay it, most of the players into higher opportunities, which you kind of can't fault them, which is why I loved FAU, and a lot of people did as well. Look at this. Coach isn't leaving. He had a great chance to yeah. leave last year probably for a mid excuse me, a high major at that point. And also the players themselves made a commitment. We're not transferring out. They very easily could have went to high major yep. schools and stayed together. It's a shame they couldn't put that same run together, but granted. FAU, you can't say it was, a da- it was a bad season for them. You make the tournament, you get beaten round number one. It is what it is for FAU. I like the fact that they actually brought everybody back and tried to run it back. It just didn't work out. And quite frankly, they should have won that game. Just didn't make the plays at the end. You expect a team that made a Final Four run 
make a free throw, get a stop here, know what the clock is at the end of the game. They weren't able to do that today. Northwestern moves on. Quickly, UConn, did it impress you? I mean, it was 91 to it, oh, they 52. Always yeah. I, I thought it was impressive. Yeah. 52 19 at the break. You don't look at the final score. That's what we expect. You look at those numbers where it's like, I don't know, 42 to 10 at one point. Like, yeah, they're really good right now and they're playing well. And look, unless you had a wager on the line, you likely turn that game off despite the top team in the country playing. Uh, but somebody that needed a Stefan Castle prop, I watched mm. more of that game than I probably should have. And Stetson came out in the second half and went seven of seven yeah. in their first seven shots. Like see. And then went one for their next <laughs> 15, Donnie. Yeah. Because what did Hurley do? Come here, come here, come here. I will cut all of you. Yes. Okay? Correct. I'll cut all of you right yep. now. You go out there and you win this game by a gazillion. And they didn't win it by a gazillion. They settled for a 39-point victory over the Stetson Hatters. We got a lot more to break down. We got a pair live. We got a lot of upcoming here, yep. and DRS tells me there's juice. There's juice. There's juice. There's juice. In Texas A&M, Nebraska, and I'm telling you, we're going to put our running shoes on. Go Big Red. I told Donnie race to fives. I, I don't know if I can handle it. Race to 10? Nebraska, Texas A&M? Race to 85. What's that price? <laughs> It's up. Nope. Race to 80, I can go. get you. I oh, can't get you race okay. to 85. I can okay. probably get you uh, race to 80. We put the track shoes on. We put the handicapper get us, hats get on. Get those signals on, well. too. Come on now. Uh, listen, we, we got no signal. Not us. <laughs> Not us. Back right here on Bracket Central. Sportsgrid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have a chance. That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sportsgrid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State gonna rule. They're always going to be better than the West half. Yep. And that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me that they not only went on a five day heater like they did in 83 when Valvano took them another six games and they won the national mm -hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, Duquesne, right. like they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell coast to coast only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head -head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back -back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back -back, just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Back 
back right here on Sports Grid. It's Kevin Walsh. It's Donnie Wright side. It is Bracket Central. Let's quickly hit this live board. Let's talk a little bit about what we're going to follow throughout our four hours here tonight on the grid. 68-61. It's an Auburn Tigers lead. It's a mm-hmm. live total of 156.5. We're trending over an 8.5 point spread. So a lot of that is in the balance. But what we're seeing, Donnie, and this happens later on in games, a spread and a money line that don't add up. An eight and a half point favorite is not supposed to be minus twenty two hundred on that money line, but that's what we see here. Nearly eight to one for Yale to come back and pull this off. Saw so it yesterday, right? Was it the Nevada game, which had that crazy yep, number where they're up did. five or six points with a ridiculous number and end up flipping on its head? Yeah. Now, granted, we're expecting Auburn to win this basketball game, but they are showing a lot of respect to Yale here because this isn't a you know because we're not ta- if we're talking about having three and a half minutes left in the go in the game, like okay, that makes sense. Still six and a half minutes to go, which means Auburn is supposed to be the better team with a legitimate chance to pull away now do you take that eight and a half points because you're expecting Yale to hang around but as we saw yesterday if you lose in this tournament Kevin it's not a regular season game job boys lost Tuesday back Mm -hmm. at it Friday let's walk off the court and have some fun that's not going to be the case here so maybe get those extra points but it's hard for me because we'll look at that Colorado Florida game along with them not having eyes on the game all the way through to get a feel for the vibe of it as opposed to just looking at the cold numbers here. I don't really have a feeling of which way to go, but I'll tell you one thing that does stand out. Colorado, Florida, Kevin, 189 and a half is the total. That's wild, man. Well, Scoring left and right. So this is where we say these yeah. things aren't even, Donnie. Wouldn't you love to grab 6-1 to one on Florida in a back-and-forth affair like it's this? It's true, yes. Right? Yeah. You know Florida's going to be able to touch whatever number you need them to touch. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say, I mean, you're sitting here at 151 points. Does that feel... That, See, I, I hate doing this I, on delay, and it looks like they just got back from that under-eight timeout. Yeah. But that live total almost looks a touch short there, Donnie. I got 81 to 72 right now, and it looks like they uh, locked the lines here on this side. Yeah, they just but, jumped it to 190 and a half. <laughs> like, if, again, contrarian better, which I would be in this spot, would go, I'll just take the under 190 and a half because maybe defense creeps in. Like an NBA All-Star game, Kevin, like, hey, two minutes to go, let's play some defense here. But I don't have eyes on foul right. situations, who's hot from the three-point line, so I wouldn't be able to give an honest answer. Colorado's in the I bonus. This. Colorado's in the bonus. That's a long way to be in the bonus, too. What's the other foul situation? Uh, five fouls on Colorado, so what, two more away from the bonus. Two more away from the bonus. 7.44 yeah. to go, Don. That's eight minutes. Feels like an, You're over, at, feels like an over 190, it does. Well, what do you – so – Oh, see, because this is where we're, we're – hey, you know what? Here's the thing. It isn't over. It's that – and this is – and everybody knows this, especially especially with the tournament, yeah. how much streaming you have to do. True. We sniffed out the over 188 and a half, and by the time we understood what was going on in the game, it's a, <laughs> we, we lost five points. Yeah. Like every – it's when we were doing it yesterday. Bet it. Let me bet it. Ah, it's up a point. Let me bet. That's up a point. Let me bet. change again. Not forget about yeah, it. It's, not, it's 194 <laughs> and a half. So uh, if you heard us talking about it <laughs> and grabbed the over, I think that worked nicely for you. Speaking of totals. As I came in here today, I thought I was going to be playing under Nebraska, Texas A&M. Let me tell you why, mm-hmm. and then we'll hear what Donnie has to say about yeah. the game, because I've not placed this wager yet. I will let people know what I have placed so far in that game. My thought, though, is an attempt to sell high on this listed total of 148.5. Nebraska checks into this game, top 35, both offense, defense, a little bit outside of that top 100 in tempo. Texas A&M, top 40, both offense, defense. They are a much lower basketball team, checking in at around 270. You look at both of these teams and their last games were rocket ship overs because of who their opponents were. Florida, 16th on offense, 18th on tempo. Illinois, who, of course, Nebraska played in that game, second on offense, 57th on tempo. I thought it was a chance, Donnie, to sell high yeah. on this 148 and a half with two teams that are really strong on defense and play it a bit slower than what we would see for usually a total this high. You feel there are matchup advantages, though. I think there are matchup advantages, but I do say this. I wasn't approaching this basketball game, Kevin. Like I actually like Nebraska's aside, take the one and a half points here. Not in love with it, but I think it does make a little bit of sense. Mm -hmm. Number two, it wasn't so much about the tempo on each side, as you pointed out. Nebraska much faster playing than Texas A&M. It's more about the matchups on what I think is going to take place and how the scoring is going to happen. But if you do look at that Southeastern Conference tournament, Kevin, the Mississippi game, we're talking from an A&M perspective here. 80-71, Eighty to seventy one, decent scoring game. They take on Kentucky, ninety seven eighty seven. They take on Florida ninety five to ninety. And we're talking about say, well, yeah, Donnie, they're fast teams. Well, that's the point here. A and M isn't really a fast team. And look at the scores that they were able to post in that individual tournament. So they do have it in them, and that also was on neutral court sites, which I do think is pretty important because today, once again, you're going to be sitting on a neutral court site. But if we take a look at styles that make fights, 
This game really lit up for me, and I'm going to tell you what I have on a parlay in just a few moments. But let's take a look at the game itself, right? Texas A&M's offense, not a great three-point shooting team overall. 352 in the country, yeah. Kevin, which is terrible at 28%. But how do they counter that? They do like to shoot the three-point shot. 38% of their shots come from three-point range. But hear me out on this. 314th in the country in Nebraska chasing you off the three-point line. We saw it last night with McNeese State, right? Gonzaga's not a great three-point shooting team volume-wise, but if the three-point shots are there, that's what you're taking here. So I look for an elevated number. Flip it over to Nebraska now, Kevin. A good three-point shooting team, close to 36% from the floor as a team. But check out the styles and the components here. 45% of their shots come from three-point range, 29th in the country. Flip it over to Texas A&M's defense, 351 in the country at allowing you to shoot the three-point shot. The three-point shot is the key today. So if you're looking for Nebraska, who, again, I like them a little bit at the plus one and a half, but I took a, par a parlay prop here, same game. Tom Tominaga to get two three-point shots or more. Williams, two or th more three-point shots from Nebraska side. Then I flipped it over on A&M with Wade Taylor to make two or more three-point shots. If the scoring is going to happen from this game, Kevin, it's coming from three-point land. That's not a lot to ask for, and I thought I got a pretty good price for it. That's where I'm going. That's why the juice is going to be here, and the same thing we did last night. Every four minutes, clicking two or more three-point shots look, made, having fun in this game. It is not just that, but I didn't remember seeing many of these. We are getting even better live specials mm -hmm. now. There's some player props. Something I was able to get involved with last night, and I did tweet these out, they split, but they were plus money, is some combinations. And one of those is a combination that you'd never almost see, mm -hmm. but it was a Hunter Dickinson-Johnny Furphy 25-plus rebounds combo, which is the top two rebounders on the same team. It ended up getting there, Dickinson had 20 rebounds yeah. you know, in that game. But if we get into you know Duke-Vermont, right, and you mm -hmm. all of a sudden get, hey, Filipowski and Mitchell to combine for – 20 rebounds. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that are going to be really eye-catching, and those are the things that we're going to follow. Look, I want us to have fun with this, but we're also not going to just, like, Donnie is obviously having fun with a parlay, but he give you all the reasons for it. Yes. These race two bets, I want to have fun with them, and trust me, they're fun, but I'm also not going to do these without reason. Correct. So I played Texas A&M, minus 111, race to 10 in this game. Six consecutive games, they've, they've gone first, and in terms of that race to 10, Nebraska has not hit them three out of four. It also does line up with the narrative, Donnie. Yeah. A&M knows what it's like to be in these tournaments. We know they always play well in that SEC tournament. Everyone's talked about it. My goodness. Is, I mean, Ben Stevens probably just sent out another tweet about Nebraska being in this tournament, <laughs> about how they're finally here. Finally, finally, finally. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. Well, Wade Taylor's not about finally. I'm about to knock it a three down. But let's get back on defense and get a stab. And the same thing from Radford. So I'm making that play in that game. And then hear me out with this Purdue, ba this Purdue bet. Now, I understand that people will say, there's no way he's about to give us a minus 320. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. This team, Donnie, played five games mm -hmm. against non-conference high major opponents, mm -hmm. right? At a conference, not a high major. Yeah. And in all five of them, they were the first team to five. And in a lot of them, Donnie, it was 11-0. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you guys heard Donnie's reaction. It was the appropriate reaction. Hold on a minute. You know, five points, th th there's not enough there for a team to impose their will. That's why the price is what it is. Correct. If you go to race to 10, you're talking yes. minus 650 all of a sudden because there is that time to impose their will. But that's why I went and looked it up. And this is five for five. They're playing a 16 seed who is only here, not just because they won their conference tournament, mm -hmm. but then they had to beat a 16 seed to even be deserve to get themselves into yeah. this game. I'll tell you this. You might say, well, what about Houston Longwood? Houston played about seven games against out-of-conference, non-high major teams. Three and, three and four in those games? It was terrible. Like, I would take the, a shot on Longwood if you wanted it that plus money. Purdue comes out, first play, screen and roll, dunk. Next play, Zach Eady, rebound, Braden Smith, three, see you later. I know it's minus 320. I know that me hitting UConn doesn't cover this bet because if this bet loses, yeah. I'm down for the day on this wager. I get it, Donnie, but it's a sweat, but it's researched, it's efficient, and I'm giving it a whirl. Hey, you got to stick to your convictions if you think it does make some sense here. It's a different way to have money. And also keep in mind, for the people out there, like, that's ridiculous. No handicapper we give out at minus 300. Some of the best bets in the history of professional sports <laughs> were made at minus 1,000 or more, talking about boxing matches that no way Floyd. Conor McGregor is going to be able to beat Floyd Mayweather. That's ridiculous. Who would lay minus 1,100 or whatever it was? A lot of people did, and a lot of people made a lot of money. So yep. if the odds are in your favor, no matter what the odds are, you're probably 
supposed to take on those. And by the way, odds in your favor, 70 to 66 now. Auburn, Yale, 328 to go. We're coming in for a landing, people, in that game. Auburn going down? Tough scene. Donnie rooting it in, of course, with that Iowa State future. <laughs> uh, that's the, well, let me ask you this, though. You would rather Auburn stick around because with respect to them, you'd rather play Auburn than UConn, right? Correct. Especially for the hedge opportunity. Yeah. Would Correct. you start at Elite Eight, 20 to 1? Uh, it, it, it depends on what the other brackets are, if that makes sense, right? Because if you have the bottom of the bracket with major upsets and you're getting like a nine seed coming in there, going up against your favorite, you might want to roll that one more game. But as I always say, like, I will never see the end of any one of my futures wagers. Mm. I just want a handsome profit, and I don't need the sweat in that one. But I do get a call between a rock and a hard place. And I'm like, ah, should they maybe toughen up against UConn and maybe make that a tougher game? But I don't know. Usually the higher seeds go out early, mm. just knock them down. I think also is even if, let's just say, the bottom of the bracket's mm-hmm. worked out in your favor or, or yeah. hasn't worked out in your favor. Correct. Iowa State Auburn is about pick, yep. right? No more than two points either direction. Yeah. UConn is UConn. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who's across the. And if two- UConn is there, that means they're playing really good basketball as the top seed, and everybody's going to be like, that's my squad. Yeah. They're the laying number. Five? Right? What, what if Houston laid Iowa State in the Big 12 title game? Do you know off the top of no, your head? No. But they'd lay maybe a little bit more than that, yeah. right? So that just kind of gives people uh, an idea. We continue to make it happen with you. Check in with the live board next year. I'm Rackets. Sportsgrid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have you yes! That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sportsgrid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way been... to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me that they not only went on a five day heater like they did in 83 when Valvano took them another six games and they won the national mm-hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, Duquesne, right. like they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All we've heard you see on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Back 
back right here on Sports Grid. I just got a text from my brother. Yeah. Said your capping race to tens got help. Would you agree with that? <laughs> what does that mean? Wait, what? What is that? I'm spending. I'm, I'm spending time handicapping race to ten bets. It's tough seeing it. So, is the betting public angry with your uh, bets coming in here? Is that no, what I think. He, I, th- I think he's just wondering is that where my time is best uh, uh. served. I think it is. By the way, how many bets you think we'll find today better than the live over in Colorado, Florida? Live total one ninety nine and a half. Yep, and and it looks like we, that neither one of us were able to make any money off. And of that. Exactly, and we were trying to line this up, going, well, if it's close, you might get that extra like burst in two minutes. You're not even going to get fouls in two minutes, and they're going to destroy that thing. You got no, no, no. But you have the perfect distance, I think. Isn't this the perfect distance? Like drop a three for Florida, seven yes. points. Oh, we can yeah. foul. We can yep. stay. And in then it. we're not going to play any defense because we don't want to foul. So here's your open shots. Yeah, you yeah. Might have I, I think you could could see a scenario like this. Uh, Auburn yelled. Yeah, this is good. It's better to get tight. Yeah, it is. It's better to get tight. It is. Quickly, Donnie, anything yeah. – I just want to rip through this for people here because we're right. about to you know, really dive into the live coverage coaches here in 20 minutes at the top of the hour. I'm on Tyrese Proctor, over 18.5 points. Uh, I really like this bounce-back spot for Proctor. Shot it awfully against NC State. Here's the other thing I love. Final three games for him, 40 minutes. Volume, volume, volume. This is what happens. This is college basketball. Sometimes it kind of blows my mind that in college kids will play the full 40 and then in the NBA – they don't. And that's not a knock on the NBA. It's just kind of the way college we tie works there. We, we certainly it. do. Give me the Proctor, 18.5 points, rebounds, and assists. Give me Grant Nelson, 17.5 points plus rebounds. Mm-hmm. Grant is never more comfortable than when he is with Bama getting to beat up on a mid-major team. Give me the over 17.5 points plus rebounds. We mentioned the Purdue race to five and as well as that A&M. Uh, race to 10. Donnie, what are you seeing? Boosted parlay for me, by the way, just to set the people up coming up with estimated start time, 6.50 yes. p.m. Eastern, A&M, Nebraska. Do like Nebraska a little bit in this game, but I love a parlay. Drill bone, by the way, last night. Let me tell you this. Sanford getting hammered as I drove home. Did not watch the final of the game because I thought I had lost. Woke up this morning. A happy young man with a nice parlay boost. Now I'm going to do it again today. Nebraska, we're going to take Tominaga and Williams each to make two or more three-point shots paired up with A&M's yep. Wade Taylor to make two or more three-point shots to plus 375. That's what I'll be cheering on. I think the three-point line is going to be open, and I'm looking to cash in on that, Kevin. All right, there we go. And, again, we're going to have a lot of live wagers that fly in uh, throughout these games. At halftime, we were getting involved. Uh, Donnie and Coach nailed a nice one with Colorado State live. Uh, That Kentucky-Oakland live over came in, which was nice. Uh, as well. Uh, we got Johnny Von Doom Broom to put up a board, uh, to put two points up on the board there. 72-70 now. Auburn takes the lead. What was the listed total? Uh, what did it close at, Donnie? The, I did, the over-under oh, in, in for this the, uh, For the full Auburn game Yale itself? Game. Let yes. me see what we got here. So we got Auburn and Yale. That was 140 and a half. Okay, so that's over. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the side closed at what? It was it Nine and a half? Thirteen and a half. Thirteen and a half, excuse me. Okay. Opened up alive. eleven and a half, closed at thirteen and a half. Some books actually as high, but MGM fourteen and a half. So wow. Yeah. Big time number there. Uh certainly. So Yale covered that first half. Uh and an incredible chance, obviously, to cover this full game here. Oh wow. Uh as well. Oh, we are wow. under uh two oh, minutes wow. to go. Spoils McGee <laughs> over there. Um as I can yeah, but I have a giant I can't actually watch the game play out, so but can't you pull a live stream up on your computer that I mean, isn't we're not thinking about that. Yeah, but because the fastest thing in the world, everybody knows, are, are, are the sports books there. So a three-point lead, uh, three-point made for Yale. First lead for them uh, in quite some time. Uh, 73-72, uh, Yale, the Bulldogs was, up on off. Was this what you were looking This is the same ridiculous money line that we were yes. talking about yesterday where if you just yeah, took this a this window's on not Yale, good. It was monstrous. Window's not good for leads. Jeez. We'll tell you that right now. Wow. Minus 2,200 money line on Auburn. So they got the They're ball trailing. and the lead? Yes, they do. Ball and lead uh, for Yale wow. in this basketball game here. And we have under a minute and a half to go What's the foul uh, in this matchup up? right now. Double bonus for Yale. Wow. Double bonus for okay. Yale. Single bonus for Auburn. Okay. Uh, a miss wow. for Yale. Uh, but they secure that offensive rebound and take a timeout. Uh, man, mm. it's a shame Coach doesn't get here until 7 o'clock. Uh, Otherwise, I'd ask him what he's drawn I up. mean, is he on the way at least? I mean, where is the guy? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> no, Coach is here. Uh, coach is here. We're live, we're live at 7 with JY. But Yale, got to grab rebounds, Donnie. Got to grab rebounds. This is simple a, as that. This is incredible here. Like, this is unbelievable. Because for me, again, this is coming from talking about I thought Auburn was the second best team in the bracket, misseeded as a four seed, and here they're on the ropes against an Ivy League team. Anything can happen, but and some of these kids can really play ball. I didn't see this coming. Here, so, so here's the thing though about this, and I'll get angry about this depending on how the result goes here. Okay, okay? they were misseeded, and this is what happens when you misseed a team: is instead of playing South Dakota State 
or Moorhead State mm -hmm. or, you know, Western Kentucky or whomever you want to – Akron, yep. my goodness, you have to play Yale. And that's the – Yale, Donnie, is top 100 both offense, defense. Buddy, how many mid-majors are top 100 of yeah, both? Yeah, but it's still Ivy, though, it's man. It's not my – like, what does it matter, Donnie? I know what you're saying, but it's like they shouldn't be having any issues at this point. I understand your point is but it's this a is tournament. a tougher draw than what some of the other teams Correct. got because they were misseeded. But no way, shape, or form, Auburn, as a 15-point favorite, should be down in the final minute but, going up but, against Yale. Right, but, Donnie, but we know they come in the tournament, yeah, right? So we need. So which teams check that box? Which yeah. teams have their pedigree? Which teams are capable of those type of wins? And Yale is one of them, right? Now – Look, Oakland, I didn't think was capable of it, and they did it. But the, the right. reality is, this is a basketball team that checks that box. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it looks like the March Madness site just crashed a little bit here. No, I, it I have the stream up twice. Yeah, live coverage will return in 30 seconds, it says. We'll, we'll you know, because they should be out of the timeout. Maybe they're sneaking an extra commercial in. I don't think so. I still have on the sports book, Kevin, 111, which is, I think, where they went. Yeah. Out, so I don't have anything moving right now. Lines are locked, by the way. Yale's a minus 176 favorite. Auburn is a plus 134 right now. With the now. ball and the lead, that yeah. certainly does make sense. Even if they didn't honestly have the ball, they yeah. might still be about that favorite with the lead. Again, under a mm. minute and a half uh, in this basketball game here for Auburn. And yeah, but again, and look, I'll, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. You know, UConn was misseeded last year. Now, they made it work, obviously. But this is why the seeding matters. You know, at the very beginning of this broadcast, yep. right, Bruce Pearl said, you know, you would think fifth and net, SEC champs, <laughs> nearly 30 wins. You know, that probably should get you to the three line. Should. And instead, no, you're on the, you're on the four. Yeah. And that's what happens. Yep. And, and, and that's the dangers of it all, man. It just, it's By just the way, dangerous here, Colorado, Florida, 96 to 90, minus 5,000 favor for Colorado, two minutes on the clock, plus 1160 for Florida. But now you're in that foul range where you legitimately might have two teams get to 100 points 100, in a college yeah, you're baseball getting, game. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're getting 200 points yep. you would uh, expect. All right, let's see what happens But 96-90, by, by the way, Donnie. Are you want to do a play-by-play -play here for uh, I can't. Yeah, you, on, don't, exactly set, don't set me up. Don't set me up. Uh, but I'll just quickly say, yes. which helps me not do play-by-play, 96-90 okay. is a real basketball game. It is a real basketball game. Like, you're game. playing defense. Correct. You're not, you know, yep. in a bad position in, in any way, shape, or form. Not fouling so. either, by the way. So just playing this out, and I, I agree with that. Yeah, you're all right. Uh, great defense by Auburn. Here's a reality. Auburn gets it 55 yeah, seconds. Okay. If, you're, if you look at that possession, the yeah. last two possessions, yep. Yale would be lucky to get another clean look in this game. Yeah. It's on Auburn to get a basket and not foul. That's really all they have to do. Two possessions of, hey, bow up. Yale looked hopeless I like on that court. Man. Yeah, it was it just wasn't aggressive. It was almost like you're saying we have the one-point lead. Let's not turn the basketball over, and maybe we'll get a shot late in the shot clock. And that's exactly what you wind up with, getting nothing out of it. Yeah. 55 seconds left to go. We'll see what Auburn has left in the tank. But as you said, double bonus, if I'm not correct. So Yale double bonus fouled. They'll be, that's huge. They'll get that's two really free big. throws. They would get two free throws. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that ultimately ended as a shot clock violation. K.J. Simpson uh, goes to the line uh, with a chance to get to a 20-point performance there. He really came on incredibly uh, against Boise. He's had a great game here against Florida, uh, a, a likely first-round selection in this upcoming NBA draft, uh, and a big part of why people like this Colorado Buffaloes team here. And the Pac-12 uh, has had themselves a nice showing so far uh, in this tournament, Donnie. Obviously, we Oregon and Ar uh, Arizona yesterday mm -hmm. getting the job done, as well as Washington State. So uh, a lot of credit there. Uh, it looks like that's going to be an away-from-the-play foul here in this game. That's uh, interesting. So in the single bonus, see, let's see if I can quickly. And also, who got fouled at that point? Denver big Jones. Man? I think that's Denver Jones. No, and Denver Jones is a guard. I'll pull up. Here's the thing. It's college basketball. So I just usually Donnie, NBA, guard. All right, what's that, 82% from yeah, the line? Uh, Denver Jones checks in 87.8. Wow. That works nicely. That does. That works that's, nicely. That's a, usually if you collide with a guy on the uh, baseline, <laughs> it's like, please be a terrible free throw student. It's actually a good foul. Man, man, not the case at we, this point. The yet. first uh, bet I made to this tournament was a big man on Miss State, or, or kind of one of their mm -hmm. you know, wings. Yeah. But you, you can just kind of line it up and be like, okay, I'm guessing this is a bad college basketball free throw shooter, 55%. And it's just like, ah, it's all right. We'll, we'll live with it. We'll Here's live with it. Here's a question, too. Like, why, why are we going for an official review? Like, what would they be looking at here? That's fair. Four-point game, though. Florida, Florida, we had a missed free throw by Colorado, or did, did they – I think Florida was just on the free throw line. But was it an N? Was it an N? Yeah, they were. Was it an N one? Because that was ninety six ninety. 
So 97-93 now, Walter Clayton. I, you don't have to foul here either. You can play Certainly this out. Not. Don't foul. Certainly not. Don't foul, people. I think the worry for Florida oh. is your set defense. And how, many, and how many times do we see this, too? Because you get that 97-93 lead, yeah. and all of a sudden Colorado's like, well, we're not really going to run our offense. Correct. We're just going to run clock and heave something up with three seconds yes. on the shot clock. What's interesting is Look at the, this. the aggressiveness of this Florida yeah. defense on this possession has really bothered. Um, wow, that's a great play. <laughs> Look at you. You, you basically ran the whole clock down. The kid's like, oh, let me just go to the bank. I'll lay this up easy. Well, that could have been it. Well, Florida played so aggressive, Donnie, mm-hmm. right? So you never get really set in your defense there. Uh, a big offensive rebound after a Walter Clayton missed three. Got this team a second look at it. Wow. And Walter Clayton's not missing <laughs> twice. That's how you own a blood, baby. The Mac runs in per- tournament, saw him no in matter person. what. Saw the kid in person. Certainly did, DRS. And I think Donnie said to him, hey, listen, Gainesville's calling. I think that's what you said to him. I follow Rick. Follow Rick. Yeah, yeah he wasn't doing we're that. Out there. He wasn't doing that. You know, one of the things you and I have not been able mm-hmm. to talk about, uh, but I know they covered well uh, with both Scott and Mike Carver, uh, was Chad Baker Mazzara ejected from this basketball game very early on. Mm-hmm. And, look, I know he's not Johnny Broom. I know he's not Jalen Williams. But he's a starter for this basketball team. He's had really big moments this season. And that was early in this game. Yeah. And, look, that's – they it just it's the tournament. You don't need things like that to happen. And that flagrant foul – Cost him a lot of basketball here. Offensive rating routinely over 100, which is exactly what you look for here. So that was key. And also it wasn't like, hey, Kevin. Oh, he misses out. the first free throw. A near 90% free throw shooter. Always. Misses the first free throw. <laughs> Auburn's going to go down. Yeah, you know, They're going to go down. Now we're, again, the double bonus, 45 seconds tournament. left. I hate this tournament, man. Now why, though? What are we upset with? No, it because, ruins it? Well, happens? because I have, I have an Auburn preseason ticket at 80-1, to 1, right? Sure. So all you have to do, Donnie, is get to the dance. Yep. And, and this team's excellent. The committee doesn't know how to seed. Right, I mean, we got you get to this like it's all the tournament. Of course, the ninety percent free throw shooter can't make a free throw. Yep. You know, if if th- if this was a January game, he would have made three out of two. Now, what uh, does UConn kind of go to minus uh, one sixty now to win the tournament? Does the whole thing? They're going to drop. They are. They're going to drop Absolutely considerably. Gonna drop. Yeah. They're going to drop considerably, Don. Man. And rightfully so. Rightfully so, they Let's should be dropping. But that's if. That's Watch. if. First free throws down. This is still a one possession game. Yes. And if you're the Auburn Tigers, because you're not right in the, the foul game, you go right to the rim. Hundred percent. You're. If you can go quick enough, you could defend on the other end of this as well, depending if this free throw is made, because it's still a two-point game. I, I would, no, I would run it out, because at least worst-case scenario, if you're trading like two for twos, you'll be down three late, and you at least can get that shot. No, I'm saying is if Auburn goes, if they can get a score within like no, but I've 10 still seconds. Fouled, but I still oh, fouled. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I still foul. Okay, I see what you're saying. Extended out. we got two great basketball games. Colorado yeah. 99, Florida 96, 37 seconds left. Now, you don't, are you found in this game? I would foul in this game right away. Uh, Yes, but, who, but Colorado. Oh, wow. they get the steal. Yeah. Auburn uh, is going to have to go to the line for yep. another pair oh uh, instead goodness. of that put back dunk. Are we going for the three here? Is that what we're doing for yeah. Florida? Well, no, I like that. They foul? wanted no, to go the for the three. Wow. They wanted to go for hey. the three. Clayton made a great decision Ooh. and got to the basket. Uh, at last ride I owned, he was a 90% free throw shooter. Oh, He's regressed this year from the line, which has been interesting. Yeah. Uh, but if he can make a pair, that's a one-point game. The thing is, you're in the foul game. Danny Wolf fouls out, one of the one of the better players for the Yale Bulldogs. So if this game gets to overtime, that yep. matters yep. big time, right? And, you know, I know they say OT is where dogs go to die. My uh, I'll tell you what, we got a great one here at Bracket Central. We've got a great pair. Uh, we're live with you on sports. Crew. My goodness. Sportsgrid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have a oh, chance. Oh, oh, oh. That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid.
The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is? This is the guarantee Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State gonna rule. They're be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me that they not only went on a five-day heater like they did in 83 when Valvano took them another six games and they won the national mm-hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, Duquesne, right. like they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All I've heard you say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Back right here, Bracket Central. Kevin Walsh, Donnie, right side coach James Young is in the fold. Uh, and we just had Woo-hoo-hoo! a potential game winner uh, from, there's no timeouts here, 102-100. Walter Clayton Jr. gives it a prayer. Oh. Uh, hits backboard. He hit the game tight wow. three with under 10 seconds to go. Uh, but a huge credit there to the, Flor- to the Florida Gators and Colorado Buffaloes. Played a great game. 202 points on the board. Colorado 102-100. Uh, that Sweet 16 future that we took a shot on, unfortunately, goes down. It is what it is. JY, happy to have you. We got a lot of great hoops going on, Coach. Yeah, a lot of a lot of great basketball coming down the pipe here. Listen, I, wow. I, I one thing I'm starting to look at, guys, is when games are late, I'm starting to jump on overs because of the foul game. I don't know if the algorithm is it's figuring it out, um, but we have a really good Clean game. Look here. at it. Uh, Terrible nice shot. Look. Up, Johnny. Nope. Oh, Chip, can't be passing there, foul. brother. Oh, little little help, oh, wow. Little help, oh. Wow. Little help, Brad. Wow. Little help, Brad. Wow. It's all right. It's all right. We'll get him tomorrow. Thanks, brother. We'll get him tomorrow. I'm sure it was all clean down there. I'm sure of it. A lot of good box outs. NCAA hates Bruce Pearl. You got to know that coming into these games. I mean, I mean, he, you know. This you know. joke of a committee doesn't know how to seed. Hey, it, you know what? It's fine, man. Auburn goes down round. I'll watch the one. NIT next year. When, when's, it, when's NIT bracket central? <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, I'll run see, that ship. See, see, see an old play tomorrow. We, we, go, we go out to see yep. an old play tomorrow. Yep. No? No, no interest? My goodness. I'll probably get his tickets. Yale is going to upset. This is amazing, man. 14 and that, 15, That's a foul the right there. There's, there's at least two fouls. They could have called a foul right there on the rebound. Let's see. Right. I can't believe he missed it anyway. Right. Walks believe, right in on there. I believe that was Donaldson who had the Oof. clean look at the three. Oh, he got fouled by his own guy. Clean, and then a clean layup. Uh, by the way, K.J. Simpson hit that game winner for Colorado. Bouncing around uh, the rim, too. Which was remarkable. Yep. Yale needs to make one. Well, look, in college, there's a lot of time 60%, K-Dub. Hasn't been to the line yet. Yeah, so that's two for two. Uh, <laughs> but I, from and, and this is why I'd rather the women's game. You know why? Timeout, advance the ball. No, come on. The, the, I was, that Walter Clayton shot never would have happened in the NBA. Shame in the NBA. Because that's the reason I want to see it. All right, a whole lot of nonsense here, and I know I'm not on the floor. We're back with you here in less than a minute, Bracket Central.
right here, Bracket Central, four-point game as Auburn is trying to keep their seasons afloat. Uh, a two-point shot and an N1 wow. is going to get them a chance here to make this a one-point game. Save the timeout as well, Coach. Uh, Coach James Young, Donnie right side, Kevin Walsh, JY, what would you see right there? Well, I, smart play. Take it right to the basket, force the referee to make a call. Now here's what you do. If This is kind of like last year with Furman versus Virginia. Uh, if you are Bruce Pearl, you're going to get a guy to the scorer's table, you're gonna look to. You're gonna try and just get your press set up. You should know already who to foul. There's got to be guys you got to want to look to foul here in this situation. And the key thing you said it best: save your timeout. So now what you do is you make this free throw. One point game, worst three uh, three point game with two free throws. Get the ball in, advance it to half court. Timeout. Set up your last play. Donnie. I'm enjoying this right now, and your coach is right about that. Also, that we just saw a kid go to the free throw line that was only a 67% free throw shooter. Those are the guys you really have to target. And also, let's keep in mind, you're not shooting free throws in a gym here at like 67%. This is the most pressure some of these kids are ever going to face in their career. I don't care if you're an 80% free throw shooter. Scenario. Jump like ball! That was a free throw. That was wow. a dream scenario. So possession, and possession goes, goes to Auburn. Auburn. <laughs> Let me tell you. Life. This. Nah, Life. Now nah, it says possession Yale. Now explain that. Oh, oh. there you go. Now explain that. Wait a minute. They're just toying with Kate. They're just toying with Kevin right now. Toying. <sighs> I mean, if, I'm assuming Johnny Broom got fouled like you wouldn't believe as well. So for me, and I, you know, I actually thought missing there would have been live because of the size differential on the block. Yeah. But you, I guess you kind of have to. No, try you to make, make the it. one. Yeah. And you try to steal yeah. the inbound and force it there. And, it, what, and what you have is you have a play call X. I think we talked see, about it before. I, I, I really. You, don't you, have sorry. You go ahead. Yeah, well, you try to just jam the guy across the lane and you loop the other guy around. And here's the thing: it's crazy about a lot of teams. It's Auburn. It's ball. Auburn it's, ball. No, it's just an awful job from the telecast. Right. Yeah. An awful job. No, they from didn't the show the flip at that point. They, yeah. they, they got the wrong they, time. They, 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 yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> hard to win with that. Hard to win Ooh. with that. Oh, foul. Go straight up. Foul. He's going to the line for yeah, two. There we go. That was going to the line for two. Yep. Sorry, two, but that was a foul, brother. All right. Radio's here. Mm -hmm. Radio's here, Sirius XM, Channel 159. Obviously, this, this was a counter to a play they probably run that they've seen because you saw the guys on Yale. Oh, team, wow. And you saw the, the guys. It's you know, probably, probably come up with a screen. But here's the thing. If you're Goodness. Yale, what, what, is this kid, what is this kid 22 doing? You guard the backside. Like, why are you worried about in front of you? worried about behind you? Give up a deep three. Give up a deep three. So there's no timeout. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh, I, oh, I, I, oh. And let me just say this. This is the tournament. Auburn has now sent a 90% free throw shooter, an 80% free throw shooter, and an 80% free throw shooter, and we and they went 0 for 1, 0 for 1, and they just missed the front end here. Oh, you, you cannot make this stuff. And he goes 0 for 2. Wow. Room fouled, foul, anything, like foul, anything, free ball, anything, free ball. anything, anything. Oh, oh my wow. God, a finish. I mean, you want to talk about a team that just gave the game away? Wow. They, you get opportunity after opportunity. You get offensive rebounds. You get shot attempts. I mean, and obviously it looks like Broom is, is hurt. You know, he looks like he was banged up before, but what a win for Coach Jones uh, and Yale. He's been there for a long time to get this upset versus a team that we all expected to make a really deep run well, in we're March. Getting, we're hot already in the other game, boys. <sighs> a couple three balls. I see that. A couple I gotta, three balls I already down, to 10. Any I'm update? Upset. In that game? Yeah. Eight race. to eight to five, Texas A&M right All right. Now. Well, I need a and to get to 10. I don't all really right. care, though. Well, uh, Taylor's got a three, and so does Tominaga already the first two minutes. So John and another Broom, three just went down. Tominaga hit another one. So Tominaga's already down his three-point shots. Well, love to see that for you. Wow. Um, it appears, um, I don't know, it seems like they, they said Yale was allowed to beat up Johnny Broom <laughs> uh, with, as the game was on the line is what that situation reads like Make there. free throws. Um, Girl in his knee. That didn't look good. The free throw situation there was incredible. Um, man, I want to give you guys the energy that a race to 10 usually commands. I'm struggling because I just watched probably what was my oh. favorite future go down. Uh, and that is really unfortunate with the Auburn Tigers. Um, a preseason 80-1 to one bet loses uh, because of horrific once-in-a-season free throw shooting. Again, if it was Johnny, Johnny Broom went to the line to make two. Yeah. It was the 80-90% free throw shooters that went to the line and missed all of them. Yeah. Denver Jones missed the front end of a one and one We saw Katie Johnson miss the front end of a one and one And then C.J. Donaldson uh, miss a pair there. Texas A&M raced to 10. Uh, had a layup roll in and out. <laughs> so, no, look, I'll tell you this right now. Uh, listen, there are places maybe they don't bet this stuff, and then you don't get this. All these things are in. So, I'm going to be annoyed for three hours, and that's what it's going to be. Uh, we're an hour in. Look, fadeaway, garbage shot. 
Roll in there. All oh right, my cool. God. Awesome. Did that count? I mean, it shouldn't have. Oh, my God. Shouldn't have. That's tough. Cool. Lost. Should have been raced to five. How much, how much more time we got tough, left? Hey, Jay, why you're freedom 10? Because I'm going to get out of here if you're <laughs> freedom 10. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Since when they start giving away that NBA continuation? I don't wow. get that one. I need it. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Ten Happy to be right here. Now. Happy to be here. A lot of fun. A lot of fun loading on the grid, baby. Unbelievable. Get that, get Can we talk a little bit more about the Auburn Yale situation? Let's go. Come on. You know, I mean, go ahead. I, I'll okay. say this, and these are kind of everything is isolated, right? But what has the SEC provided us so far in this tournament? Mississippi State game number one, mm-hmm. embarrassed by Michigan State. That's an eight nine game. They were completely outclassed. We then saw a six eleven upset, and not only a six eleven up, well a six eleven upset by seed. Oregon nearly close as a three point favorite as an eleven seed in that basketball game. The Gamecocks got absolutely demolished by Oregon. Then Kentucky allows the highest seed we've seen thus far to beat them. And at no point in that game, we're able to get a lead, pull away, cut it. It, it. The whole thing was just completely embarrassing. And John Calipari, one of the legends of the college game, might find himself fired for what he's now allowed to happen with that program. And then the Auburn Tigers, who are a top five team in college basketball, if you've been paying mm-hmm. attention, get seated as a four because this committee's an absolute joke. They do this every single damn year. They should all be sat on the bench and just allow Ken Palm. We all talk about him anyway. Let Kenneth Pomeroy seed these damn things, okay? I've had enough of this, and Auburn gets eliminated in the opening round here. So what are we left with? Tennessee had a good game. Awesome. Bama's coming up. A lot of Charleston bets are hitting, the, are hitting this books right now, I imagine. So the SEC uh, just completely collapsing uh, on its face. I, I think the one thing that needs to happen when you, with the seeding committee is there's too much talk about net oh. stuff like that. They need to have people in the room who actually have coached the game or played the game and give what we do, the eye test. The eye test will tell you that there's no way in heck Yale is this seed. I mean, Yale, Yale, listen, they went through a really tough Ivy League schedule. They had two big wins come down the stretch. I I just think what's happening with this committee is you got guys in the room who don't know what they're doing. And and they're relying on metrics and analytics. And to me, I I understand it. I'm a coach. I see with my own two eyes. This team... In Auburn should not have been nowhere near a four seed. Nowhere near a four seed. Yeah. In the, in the in which direction you're saying? No, I think I think they're at least a three. Uh-huh. You're going to win yeah. you you win yeah, you win SEC. Yeah. Like how how are we SEC arguably the second best league in a in a country and, yep. and you're a four seed? Oh, it's what are we doing here? It, it, it's a joke. And that's the thing. And look, Donnie, I know you made the point and it's a valid one. Like at the end of the day, you, you should be able to beat, for instance, your 13, yeah. 14 point favorite. You're correct about that. But this is the tournament. You, the, you know, the gift of being the one seeds is only twice ever as one of them lost in that opening round, right? And how many times has a 15 seed won? I know it's happening more recently, but very rarely does that happen. And you all of a sudden end up Auburn on the four line. You're playing a real basketball team. That's the difference. You know, look, Stetson's, Stetson is the 340th defense in college basketball. Wagner's the 340th offense in college basketball. Those are not real programs. Yeah. And unfortunately, Auburn today ran into a real program. We're back here with more Bracket Central next. Sportsgrid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know. When it's winner go home, they love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have a <laughs> That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sportsgrid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like this it is, is this is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. 
But right. if we make him a third, they get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. Be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the Buck. The NC State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me, that they not only went on a five-day heater like they did in 83 when Valvano took them another six games and they won the national mm-hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, right. Ukraine, like they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All we've heard you say on the network is you're either winning your rebuild in game live all access nobody has been more profitable as a dog than shaka smart team winning back-to-back road games i, I don't care if they're playing topeka high i i wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever in game live prime time back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters in game live overtime honestly as, as you sit here and listen watch right now you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Bracket Central, baby, back right here on Sports Grid. Kevin Walsh, Tony, right side coach James Young. Uh, head still spinning, admittedly, uh, from everything that I've seen. Uh, Nebraska and Texas A&M, I mean, Donnie, when do you want to start oh playing my on goodness. the course here? Like, you, you, hold on now. Just hold on there. I told you the two guys, or the three guys, that need to make two three-point shots apiece here. We are five minutes into the game. I had Tominaga to make two. I said, okay, he probably get, he's got three already. Okay. He's clear. Then I had flipped over to Texas A&M and went with Taylor the fourth. He's two for two from the three-point line already. Just watched the splash go down. I was like, man, I can't see who that actually is. So I check, and that is actually my third guy, Williams, who hit his first three-point shot. So I have 15 minutes to go in the first half and a complete second half to get Williams to make one more three-point shot, who on the season is their best three-point shooter at 39% and has shot 125 threes on the season and has already won for one, which guarantees you he's at least going to shoot four more three-point shots the rest of the way. That's an incredible start here for that. But yet, and yet, I didn't bet any of the first four minutes or next four minutes, and they easily cleared all How many all threes those. did they hit? How many threes do they have so far for, as, a, as to, uh, combined? Eight combined threes in the first five minutes. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot. Williams, let's go, boys. Um, man, lost in the, in the mayhem of this all mm-hmm. was the Florida-Colorado uh, close. Yeah. And we obviously mentioned it, but we didn't get to expand on it. 102 to 100. And I think to some degree, JY, you know, you look at it right now, I don't know. Or I can't, I'm not going to start making sweeping judgments that SEC defense is the issue because that doesn't really line up because that's not why Auburn lost. They lost because of free throw shooting. But we know Florida can't. Florida is a concern about their level of guard with Kentucky, Bama upcoming. Yeah. Anything that sticks out for you or just maybe give Colorado their credit? Well, I thought Colorado just had came in playing better at, at that point. And you were concerned about Florida because when you get down to it, can you get a stop? Mm-hmm. Now, they got a couple of stops, and they tied the game on Clayton's three. But then you go ahead and you give up a, a, a bucket down right down the other end. And so, to me, that that's the thing that's a concern um, with these teams is when you get to the tournament, you do what you do. Like, if Florida's going to play up-tempo, not play defense, it's not going to change because you're in the NCAA tournament. You're going to play your style. So that kind of leads to that Charleston-Alabama game. Is Alabama going to change? Absolutely not. They're going to play high, high team, up-tempo. Charleston will follow suit. That's why you're going to probably see a ton of points. That's why 
Uh, the pregame number, I think it's 173 and a half. I think is the over in that game. High number. High number. By the way, just getting underway now, Duke and Vermont. 3-3 three to three currently right now, only a couple minutes into that game. But as Coach was talking about a high total in the other game, this one coming in around a 130 price. And I didn't really handicap this game overall, Coach, but what are you seeing here at a Duke with this matchup against Vermont? You know Vermont wants to slow it down. How do you think Duke does in this game? Well, listen, it all depends on how they deal with the big. How are you going to play your offense? You saw earlier on the ball with the Filipowski in the post. Mm-hmm. Donnie, hard trap. They went yeah. right after him. And Kyle's got to be able to pass himself out of the, the, the low post. So, And Vermont is going to take their time. They're going to walk it up. They're going to run clock. Because what do you do? You want to shorten the game, folks. You want to keep that game and play as little positions as possible where the speed, the athleticism, mm-hmm. and the height kind of gets negated. So good start, at least 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Vermont's playing it at their pace. Even when they get shots up, Donnie, they're not sending a ton of guys to the boards. Yeah. They're getting back and playing half-court defense. Yeah, I look for a good one here. I'm interested because for me also, Kevin, take a look at the ACC. I'm not all that high. Now, tomorrow, Bracket Central, I'm going to get a good look at North Carolina in the tournament to see how they're going to start to fare in that you know round number two game, which is going to be a really good one tomorrow yep. against Michigan State. But I was down on the ACC, and you saw NC State pick up that victory. We didn't think they would be in the tournament here, and you know, just rounding it out. But Duke is always a heavily bet on team, a heavily favored team. I didn't have any great looks in this game. Did you have any looks in this game overall? Uh, I'm on Tyrese Proctor over 18 and okay. a half PRA. He's playing 40 minutes in three mm-hmm. straight games. So that, for me, uh, is the type of volume I want to see. He is a high usage player for this basketball team. Uh, and he's coming off of that 4 of 16 performance against NC State. So I felt the volume uh, was going to be there and the efficiency would step up in this game. There's a few live specials that I want to talk about Go. Uh, for this basketball game. And this is just markets that we had not really been able to discuss a lot. And here's one that's going to catch people's attention. But that would be Taminga and Wade Taylor to combine for 50-plus points. That's at plus 135. They are at currently a combined 20 points in this basketball game. You know, each guy to get to 25 is obviously a difficult task. Can mm-hmm. one of them get to 30? With this start, it feels like the answer to that is yes. Does that or anything else in this game live, Donnie, grab your attention early? I mean, everything pretty much is grabbing my attention right now because the the thing I talked about here was the three-point shooting should be there, and they're raining from three on each side. I think that's where the scoring is coming from. So anything from three-point range for me is something that I would be interested in. Mm -hmm. But the game got started so hot. Like, I'm taking a look now what, I guess, A&M on this possession picks up a bucket, 22-22. That's a great start on both sides. 169 and a half now is the live total in this game. And right on it, you know, minus one and a half. Nebraska's a favorite now is a minus 130 price. So interesting there. I saw Tominaga go to the bench. I don't think he's having any. Is that just a. Uh, no fouls yet. No fouls yet. Okay. So just a normal bench change there for him. The thing that caught my attention here was the Washington Mast combined for 15 total rebounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, Washington has three. Mast hasn't grabbed one yet, but he does average almost eight a game. The reason I'm now hesitating is Washington's on two fouls. So if you're A&M, yeah. what are you doing with two personal fouls? I mean, Coach, I'll ask you, right? At the under 12, one of your main starters here is sitting on two fouls. I mean, does he see the first half again? No, he's not going to see the first half unless the game starts to get away from him. You, 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 at this point, because if you get three fouls late in the first half, like this isn't, you know, uh, Guy Lewis and, and Houston when Drexler had four fouls in the first yeah. half against NC State. Like, you got to make sure that you get your guy in the second half. So, you'll play. You could see Kevin at times late first half, offense, defense. You know, get him in on offense or, and get him in. But then defensively, you're going to turn around. You're going to hide him defensively yeah. or you're going to sit in the zone. But that's only in a desperate situation when you're really down and you feel like you really need the momentum back. I think the thing, though, Coach, and, and I'm curious where you land on this, is I would always hesitate, though, to foul out my own player. And if you sit him here for, you know, this is, there's 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Mm-hmm. And if you sit him here for these 12 minutes, he is guaranteed going to play under his usual amount of minutes. No matter what happens mm-hmm. the rest of this game, and he might himself stay out of foul trouble. Like, pulling him out right now, I agree with, right? You have to be cautious here. He gets the third foul. Okay, I understand that, but I, I and we see this in college, and it's it's difficult because, that, you know, people I don't know if they realize how different that fifth foul is versus six in the NBA. Mm-hmm. But once you get to two, you know, you're you're halfway there. You might as well be halfway there. And yeah. I I hate though fouling out my own guy. And if he doesn't come back on the court, it wouldn't be stunning, Donnie. But essentially, then you've done Nebraska a favor. Correct. 
Like I, it's, to be honest, I always get frustrated because it's one of those where if you play the entire first half, there's three minutes to go. You pick up your second foul. And no problem saying, all right, you know what, three minutes here, you played the entire first half, go to the bench, we can't afford to get you the third. But when you get those two quick fouls that early and you're such a big piece of that offense, as a coach, it's hard to weigh and say, well, I'm just going to ice my own player yeah. for the next 15 minutes, which is basically what, Kevin, an hour and 15 minutes oh of real-time action before you even get back into the game? And here's the thing. I just pulled up Washington's stats. Uh, I think he's fouled out of four games and, and had five games of four fouls. Well, see, so he's yeah. foul prone. Yeah. So this is where you're like, yeah. uh-oh. Like, w- w- I can't what even you? trust you. I situation. can't trust you. That's true. Like, he's the kid you say, don't foul, don't foul, and then he's reaching, a, reaching yeah. 94 feet from the or basket. charge again. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, you know, don't take the ball to the basket. I'm going to try and crank it on someone right now. So, to me, you got to hold off with Washington because he does have a propensity to foul and foul a lot. You can look at some of the games, Kentucky, four fouls. He fell. I mean, he fouled, look, guys, he had five. He fouled out against Ole Miss, and he had four fouls against Kentucky. Two of the last three games, the guy had four, four or more fouls, and he had three fouls against Florida. The guy fouls a lot. you got to be oh. careful. He's going to get four fouls in this game, <laughs> right? But what Donnie said is, because this is, let's, again, and we're spending a lot of time on Solomon Washington, but we're yep. looking for live vets here. Yep. He sits for 12 minutes, and he picks up a foul within the first two minutes of that second half. He's coming right back out, and he's going to play two minutes of basketball for in real time over an yeah. hour. And Crazy. that's where you basically go, you know what? I lost this kid tonight. Yeah. And you lost the kid on your own yep. by what you ha- how you handled the foul trouble. It's an interesting situation. Keep breaking it all down. Live on Bracket Central. Sports Grid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, oh, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have a yes! That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way been... to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me that they not only went on a five day heater like they did in 83 when Valvano took them another six games and they won the national mm-hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, right. Duquesne, like they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell coast to coast only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All we've heard you say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game, live, all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game, live, prime time. Back-to-back, just utterly stinker quarters. In-game, live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, 
you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Back on Sports Grid. Coming up at, because we're going to get these updated start times here. Uh, 8.03, it says Alabama, Charleston. Yeah. 7.59, Purdue Grambling. 7.59 is big. 7.59 is big. <laughs> Jay, well, I'm on Purdue. Race to five. Minus 320. How about that one? I mean, listen, you're going to win You're going to win the possession. You're going to get the first shot of the game. It's true. And then where are you going to go? Point. You're going to go either. Think, you're gonna, you handicap that? The, fir- the first two plays are going to be <laughs> some kind of. Uh, Braden Smith, Zach Eady, either dribble handoff Smith three, or you're going to roll the big boy down low. I went with, Honestly, I just went Purdue first half minus 15 and a half. You know why? Because they should, after what happened last year, they should not want to play around with this game. Yeah. They should just throw, they're going to throw, they're going to do it that UConn did, which is throw the knockout punch as soon as the game starts. But Kevin Smart play to play it early and just get your money real quick. You may be able to cash in in about a minute. That's the minute, that's minute the, thirty that's the into plan. the game. That's the plan. Had an Auburn race to ten, uh, which went well. And if I took A and M, I would or race to five. I've been doing race to fives all day. Yeah. So then what I do at A and M? Race to ten, lose. Race to five, would have won. That's how we go. Um, they called it a Euro. He tried, thought he had the Euro step right here and just got called for the travel and he made it to Monaga. So take that off the board. High scoring game though. Right around ten minutes in, Kevin, 29-28. Three balls what going about, down. Yeah. You know, what about the pace in this Duke Vermont game? Vermont really slow basketball team. Yeah, what and they like to lean on their defense to cut amounts here. But Duke is shooting a ridiculous six of seven from the floor, four of six from the line, two of three from beyond the arc, five of ten right now for Vermont. So neither of these defenses holding weight. Would a live under in the first half, 71 and a half, catch your eye at all? Or do you think this is the pace, Donnie? It does catch my eye because, you know, the one tough part about it, you would actually like Vermont to have the lead because then they feel like, okay, we're going to settle this into our own game plan. I don't know how much longer you can do that right now, looking at that updated score, 18 to 12 now, which is crazy. This was 130 points, and you're basically, you look at that five-minute mark, you're like, okay, 10 each side, it sounds about right here, something that range, 18, 12. So they're way above that pace. Well, well, again, well above it. Thir- 71 and a half means you need, four- is that right? 42 points? Am I right about that? Is that 18, 12? Yeah, 30 with the over in for the first half. Yeah, they're at 30 and the 71 and a half. Yep. Feels like a ton. That's a lot of, that's a lot of points. Because if you're, that, that, mean, that would mean that they think that Duke's going to start to pull away at some point. Because if you're Vermont, you're not getting into a track beat, Kevin. Correct. You, you, you have to, you have to slow walk this thing up it. the floor. I mean, you, you saw it just now. Uh, Duke go on a run, and basically the Vermont coach yep. says, "Forget the media timeout. I'm taking it right now. Like I gotta no settle, I gotta settle you guys down." So to me, there's no I, one. Yeah, we're not guarding anything. We're not guarding anything. So to me, slow the game down. I don't know how that game gets to 73 and a half. I'm sorry. Let me see. Let me see if that's the best we can do. No, we can do 72 and a half somewhere else. All right, let's do it. Uh, DK. Uh-huh. So, and I know that this is not the way we, you know, we want juice at all times. Yeah. But I think coach kind of pushed me over the edge there. You know, being able to identify the purpose of that timeout. You know, I, I I don't know. I see a timeout. I see I see. Well, this is my opportunity. But now see now now see now a technical foul is not going to help us get through the moon. We got we got ticked. Yeah, I mean head coach oh. John Beaker. Jared McCain misses the free throw. Out of boy. <laughs> you get two. You get two shots on the tech, right? In college, right? Yeah. College, yep. I'm gonna, but that's okay. So I played under seventy two and a half in this first hand of Vermont Duke. Uh, McCain split the pair from the technical, so it's essentially the same seventy one and a half, except you know we got one uh, off that shot. Yeah. And again, I think kind of knowing the pace and everything, and then also just the purpose of that timeout, from what Coach said there, Donnie, of mm-hmm. Vermont being like, listen, guys, we're here because of our defense. Mm-hmm. They've missed one shot yet. Yep. How about we try and defend this? You know, maybe they can't. They're going to get steamrolled here, but I'm happy to take a shot on this under at 72 and a half. See how 19, it goes. 12, 13 minutes in at that point. Some of those uh, pulse bets there. Virginia money, or excuse me, Vermont money line in the first half. 11 to 1 now when it was plus like 160 just yeah. a few moments ago. So 19 12 here and also the under shifting to 70 and a half right now at this point. You mentioned that race to 20 where the Duke angle of it would have been a little bit, you know, minus 300 or so, Donnie. Mm-hmm. And obviously that is a wager that you're going to feel really good about if yeah. you placed it now, uh, needing just a basket here. If you were Duke coach, knowing because Duke doesn't play super quick, 
<laughs> but you're playing a team, Vermont. You know, they not uh, – what are they? I think there might be 350 in tempo, so it's Virginia-esque. You, is there a degree where you're like, you know what, let's speed this team up? Because we're so much better. We're, we're, you know, we're better athletes. We're more talented. Hey, is that – or do you just – look, let's stick to our game plan. And we're, what works for us is going to work here. Well, I think you look at a situation where you, you, you want to do what you do, right? Uh-huh. Now, when you get – what you may say to them is you may not play with a ton of more tempo, but you may try to attack them off the bounce a little bit more than normal because you got the advantage. Uh, what, I, what I see Duke doing is – Going into Filipowski, I think I would look for skip passes across the floor, and then I'm punching the gap and trying to drive it to the lane. But but the thing is, is, is what's, in, order, in order to get tempo go up and down the floor, transition, you need two to tango. They're not sending anybody to the boards, Vermont. Mm-hmm. Like, they're literally getting everybody back. Yeah. Uh, the rule is, is it, folks, just real quick, the Hubie Brown rule is you send two and a half to the boards, meaning your four and five go to the boards, and your guard goes to the boards if they're in the lane. Everybody else get back. They're not even doing that. It's almost just sending one to the board and sending everybody back. A 21-14 lead there. 35-31, Donnie, in this A&M Nebraska game. So I'm really glad that I got to talk to you before I had any inclination of placing the uh, over or under wager in this game. Yeah. Wade Taylor with five threes. Are we going to get another double-digit made three game from someone? I mean, why not? I mean, the kids six of eight from the floor, five of five from three-point range. Also, 67% as a team here are the Aggies, obviously on the back there of Taylor, but also five of seven from Nebraska, 71%. It's a pretty impressive start overall. By the way, game coming up here in just a few moments, Charleston and Alabama, some similarities in this game, but not as prolific as the three-point shooting there for A&M and Nebraska because the option wasn't, you know, and again, coming into it, one of the worst percentage three-point shooting teams was Texas A&M, and they're lighting it on fire right now because they're getting the opportunities. But Charleston, take a look at this, 16th in the country for style. Close to 47% of their shots come from three-point range. Flip it over to Alabama, 19th in the country at close to 47% for themselves as well, shooting the three-point shot. Three balls are going to be going up in this game as well. should be fun to watch. I'm taking a look at something here live. Radford Taylor to combine for 50 points at plus two. They're currently at 21. Right, so if I told you they got to thirty at the break, I don't think that would stun anybody. Mm-hmm. And my thought, and this is the thing that I like, is they're on the same team. So the reality is, right? Mm-hmm. If hey, I'll wait. Taylor went cold. Well, who has to step up, Donnie? Yeah, Radford. Yeah. What do you think about that look? To combine for fifty, currently at twenty-one, with about eight minutes left here in this opening half. Yeah, it makes some sense. I mean, ride the hot hand at that point. I don't have any arguments against that. What made you? What made you point that one out, though? Like, were you looking for that angle in that when, game? When or you just... when you look at where these two guys are right yeah. now, and you you know, look, it's going to get right around there, coach. But my again, my thought is, these are these are the two guys right now that have the hand in Wad, in Radford and Wade Taylor. And specifically Wade Taylor, if he slows up, it's on Radford. Look at the pace of this basketball yeah. game here, Coach. Yeah, this this this, this game this game is not going to slow down. There, there's no, I mean, what 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 is the total right now? Two hundred? It's got to be more than that, or, or somewhere near that. So, yeah, the game's going to get up and down, and I just think you one seventy six. One seventy six. So A and M Nebraska. A and M Nebraska. Live one is one seventy five and a half. So one seventy five and a half, and they're at sixty. 67 points with seven minutes left to go. So, I mean, you could get one team to 50, and as long as the pace keeps up, and, and it's, it's run outs. It, it, it doesn't matter, guys. Yeah. If it's a make or miss, yep. they're running. Yeah. So, to me, this, this pulls well unless you get someone in foul trouble. A lot of possessions, a lot of shots. And, again, uh, look, and part of the reasons I'm, I'm really happy to play this year, if I told you Wade Taylor hit 40, <laughs> I'm, I'm being, but I'm being serious, yeah. Donnie. Yep. You're, not, you're not like, no, come on. No, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. he did. Well, why not? I mean, you, a green light, mm, the likes that. of which you could only imagine. Now, Johnny Manziel, hold on, let's be honest. He bet on a and Yes. Right? For, no doubt about it. Right? I mean. No doubt. All right. You like, all right. We'll take it. We'll take it. So where's, it where's the game at, by the way? Mm. Is gambling legal? Let's see. Memphis? <laughs> Better hope so. Tennessee? Tennessee's legal, right? I think. Uh, you want to give us an Otani breakdown quickly on the show? Tough scene out there. Tough scene. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, Memphis. They're in Memphis right now. But also, you know, it's so funny with these specials. They never post the other end of it. They've left the price on that uh, rebound bet the exact same. Yeah. The kid Washington is not playing. The kid Mast hasn't grabbed the rebound. It's yep. very interesting. Don't to care. See that that Things are uh, load up. hasn't moved <laughs> really whatsoever. And I don't know if that just means the markets don't move a ton, but uh, again, that's all stuff for us to keep our eye on here. We're still about 25 minutes away from the other games joining us, though. 
Uh, that's kind of that's the result of all that overtime basketball. Mm -hmm. Good, push them back a little bit, have a little bit more fun, see those games cross over. Uh, in this game, interesting too, because I have Williams. I need to make one more three-point shot. He's actually leading the team here with 11 points, three or four from the floor. I was actually thinking about those 15-plus markets, yeah. but I just figured like if he's going to get that 15-plus, it's probably going to be with at least two three-point shots. So I laid off that side as opposed to, and I just took that side itself. But usually when you, he's one of two from three-point range, which usually means he's going to get about another four or five since he made one. And it's a great tempo back and forth here. So comfortable sitting on that at this point. But what a pace, though. Like Texas a and 40 points with basically six and a half minutes left to go in that first half. It, have you guys thought at all about which one of these teams would present the bigger issue, uh, Houston, if they saw them in the next round? I, I, I would I would lean A and M. I th I, th I think they I think they're they're a little bit more athletic, and I think uh, you know I think Houston's guards will will, will get up into Nebraska a little bit. Um, but mm -hmm. a guy like Taylor would not be scared at the moment of Jamal Shad or LJ Grier Carter guarding yeah. him. He would not be scared. He would actually look to attack them. Especially, that. Coach, if they won this game and he's probably going to come off of a 35-plus point mm -hmm. effort. You know me, ride the hot hand. Like, that guy's like, hey, you know what? I'll get you guys involved in this next game here. That ain't happening. Right, by the way, I, I do I do like what we're getting out of Vermont because they are literally taking their time. Mm -hmm. They're running the clock the down. Can. Tick, 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 tick. Not a lot of shots. Yep. Not a lot of shots. Uh, that's, that's, what we're, uh, that's what we're looking for in that one yep. now. Uh, hoping to slow it down. Uh, we're not going to slow down too much, though. Just a quick break right here on Sports Trip. We'll be back with more Racket Time. Sports Grid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have a chance. That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State gonna rule. They're always going to be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me that they not only went on a five day heater like they did in 83 when Galvano took them another six games and they won the national mm -hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, New right. like they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell coast to coast only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head -head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart Team. Winning back-to-back -back road games. 
I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In game live, prime time. Back to back, just utterly stinker quarters. In game live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Back with you right here on Sports Grid. Covered wall, Stani right side, Coach James Young. Two live, two more to go uh, for us in this window. High scoring AM Nebraska, 42 34. Under six minutes left here in this basketball game. We have a little more than eight left in Duke, Vermont, uh, with a 24 16 lead for the Blue Devils. Some live action uh, on the board right now for me and AM. Uh, Wade Taylor, Radford, 50 plus bet. Uh, which was listed at plus 240 at the time of the action, and a live under 72.5 for the first half of Duke-Vermont, something that we all talked out here, uh, Coach. Uh, and you said that out of the timeout, Vermont was going to look to change their game plan. What have you seen from Vermont uh, since, you know, under it wasn't the under 12, but under 13? Well, I've seen them try to, to, to run this up. They're trying to take Filipowski, interesting, off the bounce. Uh, they're struggling to score because they just they can't, they can't create offense. Yeah, they can't create offense. So to them, they're leaning on their defense. Uh, defensively, they're packing it in. Uh, they're trying to make Duke make outside shots. Phil Pasta gets the ball. They're trying to double team him. Uh, but to me, right now, it's it, they they are down eight. You just can't panic right now, Kevin. Can't panic. You got to take it possession by possession. But the one thing I would consider, if if I am Vermont, is they only play two percent of the time according to synergy. Like, do you go to a zone? I mean, do you consider a zone with the fact that you are getting uh, uh, beat up inside. They have slowed them down some here, Donnie. Yeah. Again, I mean, it was a runaway freight train to open this game. Uh, the the shots are going to have to come from somewhere. You know, that's the thing with the tournament. You got it. You got to make some threes. That three point shot is, you know, why we see more and more upsets these days. It creates the variance. Yeah. Uh, for teams here, uh, and Vermont's going to need a couple of those to go down. Yeah. Ten point. Look, here's the interesting part about it too, because Ver- Vermont wants to play from the lead to dictate that offense. It doesn't look that that's going to be the case. Let's just say Duke does go up by 15 points at the break. Doesn't that lend itself more to a total to the over in the second half? Because Vermont came like, hey, let's run our sets and get back into this game. It's more of we're going to have to force the issue here to do that. You can also just take a look at some of these fun bets here. We talked about that first half total, 71.5, 72.5. It's now down to 66.5 here at a minus 130 price to the over. If you're looking at that first half over under, uh, first half margin, Duke one to five points it's plus 630 so if you think vermont can actually come back and duke can still win by one to five points that is a big ticket number here but if you think vermont comes all the way back which i don't know down 10 25 to one price here on that first half so i i needed better out of vermont here but i would start to look towards the total to the over duke's not going to stop scoring and not going to slow it down vermont might have to pick up the pace here i so my thing is i mean it's duke will gladly slow it down once they're in control and I think for Vermont, and, you know, and Coach, I'll let you talk more to this, but I don't know if it's as simple as, all right, now we're a fast team. Yeah. After all year long, being one of the 15 slowest teams in college basketball, uh, we'll just play like Alabama. And even if they try to pick it up, that efficiency can be lost then if that's what they try to do. And, you know, again, going fast is one thing. Being able to convert is yeah. another, Coach. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't get out of your shell yet. I mean, you're still in a 10-point game. Uh, if I'm the Vermont coach, I'm just saying to myself, okay, we're down 10. Uh, about what seven minutes left to go in the first half? Like, can can you be down by six at the break? Yeah. Right. Like, let's let let's let's play the long game here because to me, Donnie, you get concerned that if you start playing too fast and you're jacking up shots, Duke's athleticism and speed will get put on full display, and the team that doesn't want to run a ton in Duke will then become opportunistic yeah. and get a lot of fast break opportunities. No, I hear what you're saying on that. It's interesting to see how it will play out because you get some different looks at halftime there, and then flip it over to A and M. Like, a and M might have 55 points before the break here, which is absolutely well, well, incredible it, it, how this is playing out. Interesting enough, I took Texas A&M, and maybe this is crazy, team total over 94 and a half points right now. They have 47. You figure they're going to get about 55, 58 points. Now, if you were at Nebraska, you don't – I don't think you got the defense to slow this team down. So what do you do? Yeah. you, you got to keep pace. And I don't know 
if Buzz's kids, especially Taylor, is going to slow down, I think there's plenty of shots there. Yeah, the only issue with that is Taylor picked up a second foul. Mm -hmm. And I think Buzz likely, with a double-digit lead, said, as hot as you are, I'm not letting you pick up the third. And when we got out of half, yeah. just look, you've got to play Ole defense. I don't really care. But I can't have you have three right now because Radford started to pick it up. But again, that was part of the, that combo bet there. Wade Taylor hits the bench. Well, who's in charge of the offense now? Mm -hmm. Radford, who's all of a sudden up to nine points. Yeah. Those guys sitting on 26 combined. Yep. Where, do I, where, do you, where do I want to be at the halftime and to be happy about it? A plus 240 ticket to get 50 combined. 30, which I would need another four points for. It, it would make sense at that point. And also, if you're looking at the pace here, because Nebraska's going to really pick it up in the second half, so I, I don't see this tempo slowing down either way, which is actually a really good thing. Whether or not A&M has a 10-point lead, 15-point lead, 15 lead, or even a 5-point lead at the break, it looks great back and forth. The three balls are out there, and both of these teams, what, 53% as a team, Texas A&M from the floor, 46% for the Cornhuskers here, but getting a lot of shots up. 34 shots already for Texas A&M in the first half, and we still got three and a half minutes left to go. Uh, and I think the key Incredible. thing is, e even though that they're getting a lot of shots up, it's not like it's a BYU situation where they're shooting half their shots from three. Correct. It's only about, it's only about I think about a third of their shots are coming from the three-point line, which yeah. means what are they doing? They're attacking the basket. So that means more points possibly in fouls, foul trouble, hopefully not for the A&M guys. Yeah, uh, it is slowed down considerably here in Duke, Vermont. I think it's now going to be about whether or not they can keep that efficiency that we had discussed. Uh, that spread for a while was nine and a half, I know, for Vermont in the first mm -hmm. half line. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked, uh, I know, again, Carver and Scott Farrell were talking about the, uh, the double-digit dogs covering in the first half, not the second half, which sometimes is the opposite of what people would anticipate there. Um, I mean, every situation is different. The uh, really unfortunate situation uh, for Western Kentucky backers today, which I know both Donnie yeah. and I experienced, uh, a seven-point halftime lead, getting 15, you're up 22 is what that really means. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were absolutely uh, outplayed in every way imaginable in the second half and uh, lost that game by 17 or 18 points, uh, I think it is, when it was all said and done. You know, Vermont has a chance for a first half cover here, but... You know, again, Duke, and, and this is the key when, when teams are trying to pull these upsets, I've always felt, is the early lead. Yeah. You know, look, with all the credit of what Samford did last night, right? Like, mm -hmm. that was the opposite. You, usually teams aren't down 20 with 10 to play yeah. and then make a great game of it. But usually it's that, hey, we're up 10, and now we just kind of play through this. And, uh, again, that's how a lot of teams can, can, you know, at times find their pathway. What are you looking for? Right now, Donnie, anything? Uh, yeah, check out oh, see, this uh, Texas A&M game, which is now 49-39. to 39. They did have the total up, but they just locked it and pulled it down. It was right around like 100 points. Both teams in the bonus here as we find ourselves in the final three, three and a half minutes of the first half. Uh, also, for the game itself, Texas A&M win and Wade Taylor 30-plus points plus 155 is listed right now, which I don't think that's that bad of a bet here because I expect that tempo to be big. Uh, Nebraska to win by between one or ten points as they came in between minus one and a half to plus one and a half, depending where shopping. That's a plus 440. But again, A&M just hit the 50 marker with 311 left to go in the first half. It's great. I didn't expect this, but I thought we'd have a decent pace in this one. I didn't think it would be this crazy. Guys, really quick, one, one thing of note is, is the fact that both uh, McCain and Proctor both have two fouls yep. in, the, in this first half. So what, if you're Vermont and you see them uh, on the floor, do you go at them? Do you start to come out oh, yeah. of what you do uh, offensively to try and see if you pick up that third foul? And if you're one of those guys, you, you better not foul. Like, and you better not foul. Let, let's just, you know, usually, so McCain's on the bench. Proctor, Proctor was. The game. Proctor to come back in. Here's why. Duke is not a very deep basketball mm -hmm. team. They have, a, I tell you, you look at that Duke starting five. Yeah. And you'll never be able to wrap your head around them not being better. Yeah. You, you, you know, and it's one of those things. There is not a lot of depth to that mm -hmm. basketball team, and that's right now why Shires having to run out there a two-foul guy. Now, again, offensively you're secure, but I, I guess where this would really open it up is for the Vermont offense to be aggressive and, and now try and put some pressure on the bigs. You know, Filipowski and, and Mitchell, are, are those guys on at least one foul? No, they're clean right now, which is really important because mm -hmm. your back-end guys can play tall then, Coach. Yeah, and that's what you do. And it, you did, the possession before Vermont – I, they they tried to go one on one. Actually, what are you doing? Jesus, 
Sorry, you know, <laughs> as a coach, I said coach of me just got mad at the <laughs> questioning, like, what are they doing uh, offensively? But, yes, what you do is you'll probably go inside. They tried to back, back down Proctor. Proctor back then, but then you probably had the big come in and help. So that that's something you have to look for. But at least what that does for us is it's making them play slow Vermont because they're trying to get that matchup that they want with Proctor guarding one of the guys. We've got uh, under five now here. Uh, 28 to 18, so that would be 46 points uh, if the math is, is working there, which uh, means oh my God. What, this what is certainly slowed down. Yeah, some. back to back to almost their original number, Kevin. Well, actually, it is now. 131 and a half is the total in this game when it was bumped up quite a bit there. So slower pace here over the final five, the last five minutes or so. Halftime total 63. First half total 63 and a half, Coach. So, look, all we can do is cap it to this degree. Can't control what's, what's, what's going to happen for the re remaining four minutes. I just think after, you know, some of the stuff I've seen today, I'm not comfortable. Mm -mm. But, you, you know, you beat the number yep. by nearly 10. Yep. Donnie, you can't do more than that. Step back. Ah! That was Taminga or that was Bryce? I think it was Bryce. Yeah, he's one for three now, 14 points. That was a good look out there, too. Now, ah! Uh, you know what? No, I'll, I'll look this up myself. But Donnie, how often does this guy, you know, score 15 points without two made triples? I'd imagine it's not no, very that's, frequently. That's what I uh, what was going up against there. There's another triple goes down for Texas A&M right there. Goodness. Woo. You, 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 if you listen, I know you have your, you already burned your use it or lose it. If I'm Freddie Hoiberg, I'm like, yeah, I, I may, I need it. I need a timeout because they're out of their shell completely offensively right now and not guarding anybody being down 16 late in the first half, really flexing their muscle, Texas A&M. Um, I think. Just looking it up here, Donnie. I think maybe it's twice. Yeah, he's scored fifteen or more without two made threes. Yeah. Now, w but that means that you're probably talking like an eighty percent, better eighty five percent rate mm -hmm. of, which is why you because there's obviously been a number of times where he's made two or more threes, Correct. and not touched fifteen. Yeah. So I was just looking at this game as a whole for myself was I just like the matchup for both teams to shoot three point shots and you sort of just go down and say, well, what does he usually do? It's a lot of games where he's made two three point shots and that's against teams that are taking away the three point line. But that was a clean open look that he had that just rimmed out on that last one. But also, if you're down 16, which means let's just say it ends at the half a minute and 20 left here. Yeah. What's going to happen in the second half? All they're going to do is shoot three point shots to get back into the game. So I like my chance. I actually like them down. 16 points, then up 16 points at the break. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Manny Obeski has stepped in for Wade Taylor a little bit more than I would have wanted to see with my wager. Uh, he's got three for four from three, 17 points, yeah. matching Wade Taylor. Yeah. I mean, if you want an idea how bad this is going, Wade Taylor has been <laughs> unreal this first half, and he's yeah. the joint lead scorer. Correct. Uh, for, I mean, it's a 15 point game. And, and, yeah. and here, here's the crazy thing with those two guys in foul trouble. The, the team total right now in, on DK is 98.5 Texas a and I already took it at 94.5. Maybe I'm crazy. I may jump in this again. I, That's if, game if, style if, right there. At this Find point, thing, yep. 56 points. They're going to yep. probably get 58 at yep. the break. And the Nebraska's going to have to keep pace mm -hmm. and try and run. Yeah. And I don't think Buzz is – this is the type of team, Texas a &M, that I don't know if they know how to play slow. Yeah. Right? You know when they play slow, Donnie? When they go to the bench. That's mm -hmm. when they start playing slow. I, I think the question, devil's advocate, can they – I mean, they're 9 of 15 from three. Can they really keep that up? But they're one of the worst percentage-wise three-point shooting team in the country. They like to shoot a lot, so chances are they're not going to keep the 60% up, but they'll keep firing away. But that means, let's say you get another 15, Donnie. Mm -hmm. Three of 15. Yeah. You know, uh, that's extreme. Four of 15, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Four of 15 would put you at 10 for 30 for the game, which is probably more. Or No, I'm sorry. That would put you at 13 yes. for 30 for the game, which is much better than... Here's typically an interesting stop. Uh, this uh, Purdue first five bets right around the corner. We'll be right back. SportsGrid's going to have you covered for this NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's going to have a yes! That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this 
you are feeling this at home, the excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way been... to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. State game on Saturday against North Carolina that stood out most to me that they not only went on a five day heater like they did in 83 when Valvano took them another six games and they won the national mm-hmm. championship. The committee didn't sit there at the beginning of the week and think that Oregon, New Mexico, NC State, Duquesne, right. like they didn't sit there planning for all those teams to go and win. Pharrell coast to coast only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All we've heard you say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game, live, all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka high. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game, live, prime time. Back-to-back, just utterly stinker quarters. In-game, live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your last chance to get in. Bracket Central, Kevin Walsh, Coach James Young, Donnie right side. Race to five, minus 320, Purdue. Five non-conference games against non-high major teams, 5-0 and oh in the race to five. As Coach said, the tip should already be secured. So we're starting with the ball, and from there we got to make a couple. All right, Kevin, I'm sold. I'm, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm jumping in. I'm uh, jumping we've, in. Look, we've seen a <laughs> lot. Hey. We've seen a lot of 10 nothings from this team. And we mentioned this first to Donnie about an hour ago. We went, hold on now. Five minutes, anything can happen. That's why it's minus 320 and not minus 10,000. So we're taking a chance. You taking a leap with me or no? <sighs> Let me see what we got here. Do we get any movement on the numbers? Like, can, can I get a better price than what you had from before? I mean, shop around, this, yeah. Donnie. Shop, shop around. around on this. To, let me what see. market is it actually? Where, where it's is in the this? race, too, on FanDuel all the way in the uh, I, I went to DK to look there. I don't see it. Well, yeah, race the reason I went. Um, 560. Oh, 10. I'm sorry, 320 yeah. to 5. You see that de- that gap there, yeah. Donnie. And again, I know why that gap exists. But that gap is what makes this, you know, it's where I think the value comes in. Race to 80. Um, mm. Yeah, the race to 80s are funny because they post the neither. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it, 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 gives, yeah. it gives it a little bit of juice. All right, let me get in a little bit on this. Just a, yeah, yeah. Donnie, just a little bit. Exactly. You know, luckily I know DRS has never been scared of juice. And, and, no, I'm not. You know, this is going to make uh, for some interesting television. I'm in. Uh, we're at the break, 58-44, yeah, a and over Nebraska. We'll break that down. We're approaching halftime of Duke-Vermont, 32-27. Barring a miracle, we're yeah. going to be able to cash a first-half live under wager uh, that we as a trio were able to talk out, which is going to be really nice, put a win up on that board. Uh, and we've got 26 at the break from Radford-Taylor. Could have been a lot more. Taylor hit foul trouble, and instead of Radford taking full advantage, 
Abeski has 19 at the break. He's actually their lead scorer, which uh, is totally incredible there. But again, give him some credit. Give A&M plenty of it. Uh, Again, Purdue, race to five. We're back in less than a minute. Let's get five, Zach. Let's get five. We'll be right back. It's Bracken Central. 